Hi there. We're going to solve this AP style extreme value problem. This is precisely a type of question that has appeared in their exam material, so I want to make sure that you are ready to handle it. Here's the question. For what value of k does this function, x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus k, have a relative maximum of 6. So this is a very typical AP style question where it may or may not be particularly difficult. This one happens to not be so difficult, but it's just requiring us to use our knowledge in a way a little bit different from what we are used to. I think it's helpful to realize what this question actually amounts to, and I think you'll see it's pretty simple. This function, x cubed minus x squared, etc., it looks something like this. And you can see on this function, we've got a relative maximum right there. Now, this plus k at the end, the thing we're trying to solve for, it's just a constant that, depending on its value, shifts the graph up or down. And all we're trying to do is figure out what value does k have to have so that this thing is shifted up enough so that this relative maximum has a value of 6. That's it. It's really not all that difficult. So what we're going to do is take the derivative of f of x. We'll use that to find the maximum and or, or at least where the maximum is. And then we'll be off to the races. So let's take the derivative. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. This is f of x, so what is f prime of x? Just simple power rules here. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and then minus x squared becomes minus 2x, minus 5x becomes minus 5, and that constant k, conveniently, since it's just a constant, becomes 0. And so this is our derivative. Now, this is a continuous function, and it is defined on all real numbers, and its derivative is as well. So if we ask, where are the critical points of this function where the derivative is zero or not defined? Well, the derivative is defined everywhere, so we're just left to find where the derivative is equal to zero. So in order to do that, we'll take the derivative that we just figured out, 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 and set it equal to 0. Again, we're trying to find the critical points right now. Once we find those, we can check to see which one is a relative maximum. Now, in order to solve this quadratic equation, of course, you could bust out the old quadratic formula, but that won't be necessary if you just try some factoring. Let's do that. And I'm going to go ahead and write f prime of x over here on the left just to make this work super clear. You can see that we're setting the derivative equal to 0 and solving for x to find our critical points. Now, when we try to factor this guy, we know we're going to have to have a 3x in one of the factors and the other factor is going to have to have x. That way we get 3x squared. Now, besides that, since the constant is a negative, we know that one of these is going to need a plus and one of them is going to need a minus. We'll have to wait and see which will be which. Now, what numbers could possibly go here and here? Well, they've got to multiply to negative 5, so that limits the options quite a bit. We'll have to have just 1 and 5. So the only question is, where does the 1 go, where does the 5 go, and which one is positive and which one is negative? Well, your inclination might be to put the 1 over here, because that's the thing that's going to get hit by the 3x. It seems like putting 5 there and having a 15x probably wouldn't work out so well. So let's put the 1 there, and let's put the 5 there, and how's this going to work out? Well, we'll get a 3x. And we'll get a 5x. Okay, so we'll have to subtract the 5x from the 3x in order to get negative 2x. Which means we're going to need the 5x to be negative and the 3x to be positive. 
all right, that's going to work. And you can, you know, you could do this multiplication to confirm it for yourself. We got negative 5 times 1. We've got negative 5x plus 3x, which gives us negative 2x, and so on. So we are good. All right, so what are the solutions? Well, let's just go ahead and change colors. This guy over here, 3x minus 5 equaling 0. And I should write that. This has to equal 0. 3x minus 5 equaling 0 would tell us that x has to equal 5 thirds. And x plus 1 equaling 0 would tell us that x is equal to negative 1. So our relative maximum is either at x equals 5 thirds or x equals negative 1. To figure out just where it is, we'll use a sign chart and look at the sign of the derivative. A sign chart is a pretty handy type of thing for these problems. I'll draw it over here. Basically, we just draw a little number line and label the critical points on it. So we'll label negative one maybe right here and we'll label five thirds over here. How accurate the number line is is not especially important. All we want to do now is look at these different parts of the line and evaluate what the sign of the derivative is in those intervals. With that information, we'll be able to to determine what is a relative maximum and what is a relative minimum. So the first thing I'll ask is if x is less than negative 1 over here, then what is the sign of the derivative? Well, it makes it pretty easy to figure that out if we look at the factored form of our derivative. Of course, remember that this just came from the derivative, so we can just look at that. If x is less than negative 1, then this factor here is going to be negative, and this is just going to be negative minus 5, so that'll be negative 2, and so we'll have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So if x is less than negative 1, then our derivative is positive. So then we have to ask, what if x is between negative 1 and 5 thirds? If x is in this interval, then x plus 1 is going to be positive now, but since x is still less than 5 thirds, 3x minus 5 will be negative. And so this whole thing is going to be a negative times a positive. So the derivative in this interval will be negative. So let's write that down. And then the last thing we have to answer is what is the sign of the derivative over here when x is greater than 5 thirds? If x is greater than 5 thirds, then x plus 1 is still positive, and 3x minus 5 now will be positive 2. And so overall, the derivative is positive over there. All right, so where is our relative maximum? Well, we just got to read the sign chart. What we see is that our function will be increasing, so it looks something like this, until x equals negative 1. Then it starts to decrease. So it looks something like this. It decreases until x equals 5 thirds, where it then starts to increase again. And the specific shape doesn't matter here. What matters is how it's increasing and decreasing. And you can see, even if this doesn't look exactly right, this is definitely where the relative maximum is based on the sign chart. Since the derivative switches from positive, which means the function is increasing, it switches from positive to negative at x equals negative 1. That tells us x equals negative 1 is where our local maximum is. And this other piece over here, 5 thirds, that's clearly going to be a local minimum since the derivative switches from negative to positive. So how do we finish the problem? Well, we know where our local maximum is. It's at x equals negative 1. But what is the actual local maximum? Well, we know what that is. It's 6. That's the whole idea. We need the local maximum to be 6. So if we plug negative 1 into our function, it should equal 6. And with that, we can solve for k. So let's go ahead and zoom out again here. What we know now is that if we plug negative 1 into our function, we just figured out that's the local maximum. That's where the local maximum is. And so it's going to have to equal 6. So let's plug negative 1 into the function. 
we'll have negative 1 cubed minus negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 plus k. And this equals 6. And now we just have to solve for k. Just be really careful with your signs. Negative 1 cubed is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so that's just going to be minus positive 1. Then minus 5 times negative 1 is plus 5. And then plus k equals 6. And we can finish solving for k here. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Plus 5 is positive 3. So subtract 3 over to the other side. k equals 6 minus 3, which is 3. And that's how you solve for k. And the graph, if you're curious, once we set k equal to 3, the graph looks like this. And as we would expect, we see a local maximum of 6 at x equals negative 1. And that's how you solve this cool AP-style extreme value question. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments.